The, um, you know, what led us to Chestertown originally was, uh, was one of thinking about a second home for retirement at a weekend place. Um, and, uh, you know, we bought a home in Chester River Landing, um, actually before they were even built and watched it be built. And then um, uh, I took a job in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, which uh, was about four hours or so from here. Uh, but we were here one weekend a month. Uh, every month religiously. Sometimes it would be a week or two weeks for vacation and we continued to stay connected by the SPY, by the Kent County News and uh, uh, joined the church, uh, Sacred Heart. Uh, we're part of the Sultana's Captain's Table. Uh, certainly the restauranteurs know us, the retailers know us. We have friends here and uh, didn't think that I would end up working here and then the opportunity came along that uh, through a recruiter called me one day and said, do you remember uh, do, do you remember a conversation we had? Did you tell me something about a second home in Chestertown? And I said, yeah, we well, do have one. He said, well, I've got an opportunity you might want to think about. And uh, you know, initially I thought I'm happy where I am and you know, why would I do that? And then he said, well, just tell me, you know, what it would take and and, uh -huh. and so you know we had a discussion and it led to you know an interview process and the more I was engaged with the, the the board and you know looked at the bank the more intrigued I was you know to be able to in essence get here sooner than what would be during a retirement you know it'd probably be another five years or more before that would ever happen it, you know since the uh, the almost financial collapse several years ago there's been a combination of bank failures and the, fa and the fact that the FDIC hasn't approved really hardly any new bank charters, the net number of banks has just dropped. Um, I, I think that in some respects they're, you know, probably Washington, some at least some of the constituents are glad there's fewer banks. Um, but it, it, it certainly has not got any easier. In some cases, the community banks have uh, paid the price for some of the ills of, of the large banks and, and even the non-banks that caused some of the problems. Yeah, We had more rules and regulations than ever and we frankly weren't the culprits. You know, yeah. we, were, we were always treating our clients and the communities well and, and the people that bank with us, we reinvest that money back in our communities. Uh, and so, um, but it is a, the, you know, the life we have and, and while it's not any easier today, um, we certainly play a very vital role, and it's it's good been good, enjoyable career. For I me. think it's stable now, but uh, you know we we are in right now in the economy in an ultra uh, low rate environment, and that's not easy for banks. We make money on taking in deposits, and lending them out at a higher rate, and making a spread. That's really is still the primary uh, profit source for banks, and this rate environment is is very tough. Now, why are rates low? rates are low because the economy is still weak. You know, despite what you read about unemployment having dropped, it certainly has dropped. If things were really doing well, rates would have been going up sooner. Now they keep predicting in six months rates are going to go up. We've heard that for five years. So maybe they finally are going to go up. Frankly, we'd welcome that yeah. uh, because it would, it would help us from a profit standpoint. But the underlying problem is the economy is still weak and, you know, banks you know, kind of go with the economy. If there's lots of activity, we do well. If there's no activity, then we don't do as well. My sense is, is there's improvement, um, but I think it's, it's slow. I think it's going to continue to be slow. You know, one of the things that will be interesting when rates do go up, that'll kind of dampen things. You know, it's interesting. You can get a, still get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage now for, you know, under 4%. And, and, and it's not like, you know, people are lined up at the door to get those because I think the people that that um, have refinanced have refinanced at low rates. There are some houses certainly trading hands. Um, there's not a lot of new development around, so you don't have as much of the move-up buyers that you know you had in the heyday, where people would you know go from a two-bedroom to a three-bedroom and four-bedroom, and you know as their families expanded, you don't see that much of that anymore. Um, you know, but I think the wind's in the right direction, but I don't think the wind's blowing very strong. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't optimistic. Um, I, I, I believe the glass is definitely half full here. 
Uh, I believe there's some work that needs to be done, but the, the efforts that I mentioned that you just echoed, I believe, are certainly on the right track. I believe that you know a, a community bank uh, like Chesapeake, who has been here, um, that it's very solid from a financial viewpoint, strongly capitalized, um, committed to this community, will help this community and benefit. You know, a community bank. I've always thought about it as is we're, we're in a circle with the community. If the community does better, we do better. So it's in our best interest to have the community do better because then we'll do better. And it, it and so what does that really mean? You know, it, it means, you know, first of all, that for the community banks, that people that do business with us, we are reinvesting right here. You know, we don't have branches in Philadelphia or you name it. You know, it's being invested here. Um, and there's nobody that cares more about this community than the community banks that are, that are here because this is our lives. This, we, our people live here. We work here. We want to see it, uh, see it succeed.